Hi everyone and welcome back to the Helicrafter S20R project. Um, you may notice a few things that has taken place since the last video. Mainly, I have restrung the dials and it is working absolutely beautifully. Really, really smooth operation here of both the main tuning and the band spread tuning so that is absolutely fantastic and the second thing is I have cleaned the chassis I yeah I went ahead and I actually gave this thing a proper clean something I don't do a whole lot but this time I figured I would actually go through uh, underneath the chassis I have removed this weird modification that was done with this capacitor it was wired in parallel with this one here which is the cathode bypass for the audio output tube and this is a 10 microfarad and it's supposed to be a 30 so what they had done was simply taking this one and connecting it in parallel to that one but they had done it in a weird way because they had put a resistor in series with this capacitor so I don't really know what the person was thinking that did that uh, the orange drop there, that is of course our temporary capacitor for the coupling for the audio. Um, I'm gonna probably replace that with one of these capacitors. This one's a bit too large, it's 0.47 mic. It, it's probably gonna work fine to be honest, but it's supposed to be 0.05 or 0.02. Um, the filter capacitor as we know is completely shot so we're going to have to take this out and we're gonna I think I'm leaning towards restuffing it and I found these three capacitors here which happen to be more or less perfect this one's a 120 microfarad this one here is a 68 and this one here I am leaning towards restuffing that capacitor can because that's gonna be the easiest and neatest and then we're gonna get on with changing all these black beauties which are just all of them are shot it's absolutely incredible how bad they are they are actually worse than wax capacitors when it comes to how they hold up and there's a hidden waxy down in here and there's one here this one I hate pointing in videos but whatever this one here is extremely important for the filtering. If that one is bad or not working properly, it's going to introduce a lot of harm. But yeah, all these capacitors need to go because they are leaking DC, which is not good. It's going to upset these tubes quite badly. And they will just get worse and worse as they warm up as well. So they really need to just be replaced with new caps. And I have a lot of capacitors in here which would be usable. The only problem is that the leads on them are way too short. So we're going to have to extend a lot of the leads on these capacitors. And that's why I bought a lot of heat shrink tubing, so we can make that happen. Otherwise, I will have to buy capacitors. And right now, it's kind of hard to come by parts, actually. It's, it's actually surprisingly hard right now. Let's see. Do we have any high voltage capacitor that will work as a replacement for because this one it was just a what was this one here that's a 250 volt it would be best if i had a 400 for that one too just to give it a bit of safety margin maybe i have one somewhere else i certainly don't seem to have one here these are all fairly low voltage. What's this? 400 volts. 2.2 mic. No, that's not going to work. It needs to be much larger than that. I might have something in my 
Just another 250 at 47. What was this one? It's also at 250 at 47. So we could connect those in series. That would work. There we go. Here we have what we're looking for. 400 volts. 22 mic. Yeah, we'll use that instead. And that's going to solve the problem altogether. There you go. I actually have parts. That's awesome. So yeah, maybe I won't need to purchase as much stuff for this. Uh, but yeah, we need to get on with that capacitor replacement there. Before I pull this can out, I have desoldered it now as you can see. And I'm measuring the main section. It's supposed to be 30 microfarads. It's only measuring about 10 and it's fluctuating. Which tells me that it's just done for. This is supposed to be a 10 section. It's 7. And here's the second one. It's measuring too high. So that's probably severely leaky. Yeah, this can is just... It's done for. It really is. 100% done for. <laughs> shot. Completely shot. <laughs> Yeah, not very surprising perhaps that capacitor is getting up there. It's seven years old or so now, so that's not very surprising, is it? Yep, quite bad. Here's the filter cap. And as you can see it's been leaking a little bit of oil. Uh hopefully it's not PCB oil. Illinois Condenser Company Red 30 microfarads. Well, it very clearly failed. <laughs> Green 10 microfarads. Yeah, that's that. That's the capacitator. Completely short. <laughs> Illinois Condenser Company. I do wonder what sort of oil is inside these bloody things sometimes. But yeah, here's the filter capacitor taken out of it. So now we should try and uh, do something with that. Now if you look in here, you see there's actually a plate mounted here. So the whole cutout itself, I don't know if you can see it, it's bigger than the capacitor. So you could probably put different kinds of capacitors in here some of these sets probably came with different cap filter caps but yeah there it is illinois condenser company completely shot i just uncrimped the top of the capacitor can and uh, this is what's inside I'm holding it with this just in case it would start to leak some sort of dangerous fluid but it doesn't seem to be interested in leaking any sort of fluid I'm gonna put the camera here and uh, this isn't all that frightening to be honest it looks like there is a cardboard tube capacitor inside here you can see it's loose in here maybe you can see that uh, I'm willing to bet that if, the, if I take these wires and I push them through Yeah, I can actually push it right out of here Look at that, it's coming out Look at that That is quite satisfying, isn't it? Look at that, you can see that thing has been running hot Okay, so I'm gonna grab this with another towel, just in case it does spit out something nasty at me. Well, that's it. <laughs> that wasn't very nasty at all, was it? There's no substance or anything on this, it's just encased in wax. And there's the empty shell, look at that. I'm just gonna dump that out there. <laughs> That is cool. Well, that wasn't very nasty, was it? 
I was expecting crazy PCB hazard and, you know, cancer and death, but this is not that bad, is it? Well, there it is. <laughs> there wasn't much to that, was there? And if you look at this, it's like... Let's see, can we move the camera over a little bit, maybe? I don't have the camera holder set up right now, but... If you have a look at this here, it's just a wax cylinder with, it looks like it could be damp, but I'm not going to touch it, so we won't find that out. But yeah, it's not that nasty. I was expecting this to be a whole lot more nasty than this. And this explains why this capacitor has dried out. You know, cardboard tube and, oh, you can see it's been... It's bulging there. It must have been running quite hot. Some stage. <laughs> well, that's all there was. There. That's all there was to that capacitor. That wasn't very nasty, now was it? I was expecting much, much, much worse. I really was. I was prepared for, like, death. Okay, so now when we have this empty capacitor body here, we can take our modern capacitors and we can stuff them in here. So the idea is simply take these capacitors, some new wire, some heat shrink or whatever we need and just put them in there and uh, that's it. <laughs> It'll be restuffed. Quite easy actually. I am pleasantly surprised so this used black for the ground of course and red and green green so we're gonna probably do the same yeah <laughs> I am I am surprised at how easy that was and there is nothing nasty inside here no oil no nothing it's just an aluminum shell like, if there was anything nasty in this cap, it would probably just hide inside that cardboard tube there. And I didn't even touch it with my bare hands. So, I wouldn't say this is particularly dangerous. So, yeah, let's get going with restuffing that. Maybe I'll get some of that on film. I'll set up the camera holder here and uh, we can film some of that process when I work on it. This is take two because the camera decided to mess up. Uh, <laughs> well, so the decision has been made to restuff this capacitor. So we're going to choose these capacitors here. This is the one, 120, this is the 68, and that's the 22. And uh, we need to join these together and in a way so they fit inside here like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to put some heat shrink around these and uh, join the negatives together and stuff like that. All the negatives will be joined and what I use for that is old component lead. I have this box here filled with old capacitors and stuff. So I cut these leads off and I use these for making you know little connection wires. So, and I also have some wire here. I don't have the exact colors available that the old cap had. So we'll use this earth for the ground and we'll use red and green for the rest. It'll work fine. It doesn't really matter. Um, so yeah, that's the plan. So I need to get some of that big heat shrink. So we'll go ahead and cut a small piece of this. This knife is fairly new, so it's quite sharp, thankfully. There we go. Yeah, it doesn't have to be perfect. Nobody's going to see this anyway, so there we go. Let's take these two caps, put the negatives together, put it in this heat shrink tubing. And uh, after we've done that, we are going to shrink this up. Here we go. Then we get my heat thing going. And what I'm going to do for this, I think, is I'm going to remove this nozzle from here. So that we only have an exposed end here with as much heat as possible. 
Here they all. So that thing is going now. Now we don't want to heat too incredibly much because the capacitors could theoretically overheat. So we're only going to do, you know, a little bit. And uh, there's no need to go too crazy with this. There we go, it's finally shrinking. Okay, let's check the temperature of the capacitors. I think they're okay. They can handle quite a bit of abuse, so... Okay, that's it. You don't want to go much more than that. Because it's just going to cause damage. So there you go. It's going to be very hot to touch right now. So I'm going to move it like this. And this also has glue in it. So it's going to hold these nicely for a long time. So there you go. They're physically together now. Good enough. So that's that. And then we have this one which we're gonna okay it's not that hot actually so this one's gonna go on top or something like that we'll see let's grab the soldering iron and clean solder on this off there's a bit of solder on it actually okay Go ahead and bend these out. So now this fits inside here quite easily as you can see. So that's good. Now we just need to put this one on top or something like that. But first we have to join them together. And we need to make sure this lead I'm choosing here is long enough. So it needs to go between there and the ground of that other cap. Or something like that. See, this might be a bit on the short side. Let's see if I have anything longer. Nah, okay, whatever. We'll use this. So now what we're gonna do, I'm gonna probably have to sit down for this. I won't be able to see what the camera is seeing. But we're going to make a little wrap in this and I'm gonna try out my wire wrapping tool which I've made way too wide right now so here we go now I made it too narrow instead so that's perfect isn't it squash it together a little bit more something like that I'll go ahead and we'll make a little loop on that and we'll put that on, something like so. And then that other cap there is going to get wrapped as well. And this will just ensure a good, strong connection here. And I'm sorry if I'm out of frame. You guys should be used to my rather bad video skills by now especially if you've been watching me for a while but it doesn't really matter because this video is not really about being world's best with cameras it's about electronics there we go let's grab the soldering iron make sure we get a nice clean tip going on that get some proper solder See if we can solder this nicely now.
that is looking pretty good I have to say because we do have quite a bit of room to work with here so I think I'll probably do it like that so that means we're gonna have to bend this lead over now here we go just crimp that one and then crimp that one it is not as easy as it sounds to get these crimped because they want to go their own different ways of course but that should be good enough let's get the soldering iron so then how much battery do I have? I've got a little bit of battery. Whoa, 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 I almost got an electric shock there. The bloody solder was touching down in into my isolation transformer. I really should put something over it, but oh well. That's looking pretty good, I would say. So that's all the ground soldered together. Here we go. So now we have the positives, of course, left, which is going to be fairly easy. And as you can see, this will fit down in here very nicely. In fact, you can probably even make it a bit shorter it is a bit overkill in its length right now so that can help us out too all right so let's get some of this wire solder we need to solder a ground wire on so we're just gonna solder that like here or something that's going to be the easiest wire to solder into place. Just solder it wherever you wish. As long as it gets connected more or less. So let's do something like that. Give it a little trim. Solder that. I'm gonna be a bit careful when soldering that so that we don't melt the other solder joints that we just made. So I'm probably gonna have to do this in several small. dabs here with the soldering iron I've spared you the boredom of me soldering the wires on, but this is how the final soldering turned out. So now what we're going to do is we're going to put some heat shrink over the, all these exposed high voltage connections to avoid them shorting out, of course. And uh, then we're going to put a big piece of heat shrink over the whole thing. And that's basically all there is to it. It's going to work out beautifully, I think. Okay, it's been heat shrunk and all is looking pretty good so now it's time to put that back into that can I think and that's going to be the end of this. So I'm going to put you up on the camera holder again 
Just in case it becomes interesting, I kind of doubt it at this point, but the wires, they need to go in different directions. This one needs to go down like this. The ground here needs to go down like this. This wire needs to go down like this. So that's how it's going to be. And uh, I think I'm going to put another one of these heat shrinks on it. Or maybe, maybe, you know what? You know what I think we'll do? Good old Alex Chicken's tape. Let's give that a bit of a shot, shall we? Because it really just needs to hold the wires in place for assembly. It doesn't matter if it lets loose in the future. So let's just put some of that on there. Some electricians tape. Like AVE would say. Arduino vs. Evil. Highly recommended YouTube channel if you're into mechanics. There we go. So that should, in theory, do it. So I just cut that to avoid having to pull it as hard. There we go. So this is our finished product, basically. So, yeah, that's all there is to it. So that is our main filter, that is second filter and our third filter and the common ground. So yeah, at this point we can just slide this back into this can. Might be a bit tricky to get these wires through. That's another area where elect electricians tape can help you a little bit actually. It's when you need to feed multiple wires through and it's difficult. You can just take some electricians tape and uh, that's it. Now we can probably do this with ease. So it's just a matter of sticking it in here and uh, that's more or less all there is to it. So now all this goes in here, quite happily. It's a bit tight actually, the fit I mean, but it should fit in here because it did just a few minutes ago. Here we go. And that's all there is to it, so now we just gotta push it on down in here. And it might be wise to use a screwdriver or something. Make sure the camera still rolled in here. And I am slightly deforming the can right now in order to make it go a bit smoother. With my fingers just pushing on the can so it gets compressed this way to make it go in there a bit easier. It's not as easy as you might think to get it in there, but once it's in there, it's going to be in there pretty good, I think. And there we go, we're almost all the way in. And uh, just a little bit more. And that will be the true end of the restuffing. There we go. We have succeeded. We have success. So now this cap just goes on and that's it. I'm just going to take a picture. For J.O. is rolling once again. So I'm just going to check this. Make sure there I can't see any problems inside. And I certainly can't, so at this point, it's just a matter of putting this back on. There we go.
and we are going to fold this back that's the goal anyway so let's get going with that yeah look at that now now I can really put some pressure down on it there we go now it's folding back the way I want it yeah there we go I don't think I can make it a whole lot better it does look a bit damaged but well I don't think it's too bad I'm satisfied with that and that's good enough so let's move the camera holder back and uh, here's the nut and the star washer for it so now we can put this back into the chassis actually because we are actually done with the restuffing of this that's how it turned out it's pretty good if you ask me yeah that should work so now let's put the star washer on here There we go, and then let's take this big ass knot. And since I can't really rotate the knot, I will rotate the capacitor from the other side of the chassis, of course. See if I can get this thing to bite. There we go. So we just screw that into place, basically. Mm -hmm. Now I'm gonna see where the labeling turn out on it. Because I think it would be best to have the labeling so you can read it, something like that. Okay, now I'm gonna grab big pliers. And we're gonna try and tighten this knot up. It doesn't need to be crazy tight, but you know, it does need to be tight enough. So let's go ahead and just tighten that a little bit to ensure that the restored capacitor stays in there. And that's it. Our capacitor has been replaced. <laughs> Here is the new filter capacitor installed and I, I think it looks okay. It's, uh, yeah, looks pretty good with the new fresh wires on there and uh, so this is the 120 microfarad section, that's the 68 and that is the 22 and the earth wire is the ground. So yeah, there we go, the filter cap has been changed. We can now move on to changing these these other garbage capacitors in here that all need to go and changing this thing which is the wrong value actually. So yeah, there's a lot of work here that can be done. A lot of it which will be done. But yeah, there we go. It's also quite late right now. It's almost 11 at night. <laughs> So yeah, um, I'm a bit beat, I guess you could say, but yeah, I think this is good. This is looking okay. The solder joints turn out pretty alright as well, so I'm pretty happy with that. And that's it, the smoothing capacitor has been restuffed. I think that's enough for this episode. It's already getting quite long, so... It's time for a bit of a pause. It's 11 at night. <laughs> pretty much exactly. It's pretty late. Next I'm going to replace this capacitor here. I'm going to get all the electrolytics out of the way first. So I'll change this cap here. Which is the cathode bypass cap. Which is 10 microfarads. I'm going to replace that with a 47 again. And these are very high voltage. They don't need to be that high voltage, believe it or not. In fact, something like... 
like a 25 or 50 volt capacitor would more than do for that but I don't want a crazy large value so I think I'm gonna stick with one of these capacitors and what we'll do is simply extend the leads on that neatly and go ahead and solder that in here so again I'm gonna salvage leads from these old caps here and that's going to be that I don't think I have any good cap for it anyways but there you go so yeah that's that and that resistor there is also out of tolerance it's supposed to be a 470 but it measures like 680 so well, you know what maybe there is a 680 someone put a different one in there for some reason but yeah 472 watts is what it's supposed to be so gonna change that resistor out with a proper value and I'm not sure if I'm gonna do that tonight or not it is a bit tight in here it's gonna be a bit of a pain honestly and we're gonna change that waxy as well when we're in there and doing that it's another one of those that's leaking oil nice but yeah I'm gonna change that change that yeah 